Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to the Godot Action RPG series. This video will be part five, and in this video, we're going to start animating our player character. As you can see, when we run the game, our character moves around nicely in this world, smooth, collides with the bushes, but the character just stands stands there. The the animation, our sprite doesn't he doesn't move. So we're going to be fixing that. So we're going to come into our player scene and you're going to find that's a reoccurring theme throughout future videos is if we need to do something with our player, we're obviously going to be opening up our player scene and changing stuff inside of this scene. So we won't actually have our character fully animated by the end of this video. And the reason is because we're going to have to learn about two different parts of the animation. There's kind of two areas that we need to learn about and implement. So this video is going to cover the first one. We'll get the basics down. And then in the next video, we're gonna talk about some slightly more complicated things, but they're really beneficial and important to talk about as well. Let's start by adding a new node to our player scene here, and we're going to add an animation player. Now an animation player is a powerful node that lets you basically keyframes, um, key any property actually over here. You can key anything like offset, whether it's flipped, animation, the region, position. I mean, you could key, you could key whether it's visible or in invisible. You can create any key in a little timeline down here and uh, have it animate. So first we're going to start by creating our own animation so we'll click when you when you select the animation player it should open up this little tab down here and we can click animation and do new and this will allow us to create a new animation we're going to i'm actually going to open up my reference project here because i want to make sure how i set this up so we're going to do an animation for run right yeah we'll do run right so we'll call this run oh we got to name it run right like that and you can see that gives us a little timeline down here in each of these numbers they represent seconds you can see that down here you could change this to frames per second or whatever but we're going to just keep it in seconds and we've got a snap and our snap is set to 0.1 so if we try and move through this timeline you can see our position will snap it in 0.1 intervals and this is the end of the animation um, we can actually use our zoom here to kind of zoom in. That's probably good. This little lighter area represents the entire animation from here to the end of it. And this number right here is the total length of the animation. So for this animation, um, it's actually going to be six frames for our character. Well, we actually need an idle too. That's okay. We'll start with a the run, then we'll make the idle. We're going to have six frames, so we'll do 0.6 here. Since we're in um, 0.1 snap increments, then we can do 0.6 to create six frames right here for our total animation. Now, what property do we actually want to animate? Well, we want to select our sprite because we're going to be animating the sprite for this animation. And the property we want to animate is the frame right over here. And you can see if we move through this, we get the different frames for animation. So we're gonna start on frame one. This is the first frame we want to key at the start of our animation. So then we can just press this little key right here and it's going to say, create a new, bez uh, a new track property frame and insert a key. And we say create, but we don't wanna use Bezier curves. We don't need to worry about that for pixel art for this kind of frame by frame animation. So we'll do create. And you can see it's added a little frame down here now. If we come back to our sprite, we can come over to the next one here and we can move up a single frame to go to frame two because this is the next frame we want in our animation and we can key it. Now, since it's already been properly keyed uh, or since we've already created this track, it doesn't ask us about the Bezier curves anymore. And because of that, it instantly jumps to the next uh, frame based on our snap distance and also moves the next frame here. So Godot knows that we probably have a sequence of animations and we wanna key each frame. So it's going to do those two tasks for us and we can just continue to hit the key 
right here until we get to this last one. Right here we don't want to key it again and the reason is because technically for this last frame in our animation we actually want our very first frame. And that's because um, I want this animation to start out on an action frame. So I want it to start with the leg going forward and then end on a standing frame. And that just helps so that if you barely tap the right key when you're moving your character, it'll start out on this frame instead of, instead of just, you know, being able to move the character without the legs moving at all. So there we go. And we want this animation to loop. There's a little button right here we can press and this will make it loop and we can play the animation and watch our character animate inside of the editor in real time. And we can stop this animation and save. Now we're going to create a new animation and we'll do run up. And we're going to do a lot of the same things. We'll set the length to 0.6 and we'll come to our frames here come all the way to this frame, frame seven. We'll key this frame. It's going to ask us if we want to create the curve or if we want to create the track, we do come over one, go to frame eight, key, 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 key. And then here we need to go all the way back to frame six and key that as our last frame. And we'll turn on looping for this too. Now we have running up for our character. Perfect. Now we're going to create a new animation. We'll do run left. Set our length to 0.6. We'll want it to loop. Come to here, this frame, 13. Key that. Go over one. Come up to frame 14. Key, 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 key. And then come all the way back to frame 12 and key that. And now the character's animating properly there. And you can check these animations in the editor to make sure you have them set up properly. If you mess one up, you can click on it and right click and delete it and then add a new key there. And if you lose your properties over here, make sure you click on Sprite again to get those back. And we'll add a new animation, run down. That's how we're all feeling these days, right? Just a little run down. <laughs> And we'll set this to loop as well. Come to frame 19, come to our first, make sure we're in the first point in our track. We'll key frame, key that frame, go to 20, key, 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 key. And then we'll come all the way back to 18 and key that as our last key. Test this to make sure it looks good. It does and save. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but this is going to be for all of our idle animations. So we're gonna do idle right. So let's see, idle right. This will be a new animation. This only needs to be a length of 0.1 because we're only gonna have one frame for our idle. And you could of course set up your game to have animations for the idle. I don't, I don't have that in this project. Um, but you would just make sure to add the frames for your idle animation here. Make sure to set it to loop. So I'm just going to go back to our very first frame and key that. Set it to loop and we'll create another one. Idle up, set it to point 0.1 and we'll key idle up, which will be this frame. And then we'll set it to loop. I'm going to save so I don't lose my progress if something happens. Make a new frame. Idle left. Or new animation, I mean. And we'll come to our left one here. Key this. Make sure it loops. Save. Make a new animation. Idle down. And we'll set this to 0.1 and key this frame, make sure it loops. There we go. So you should have a big, if you click on this now, you should have a big list of 
the different the four different directions that your character needs to animate in and that's pretty quick to set that up uh, it doesn't take too long to set up those animations and they're ready to be used inside of our game now so if we set our run right here as an animation um, there's a little button right here that you can play that you can press this is called auto play on load it means that this animation will be the one that plays when the game loads when the game starts running if we run our character you can see our character is now animating although he continues to animate even when he's not moving and he always faces to the right so we'll start with the very basics what you're going to learn about here is how to get access to our animation player node inside of our player script. Um, so first I'll show you how to do it. So let's hide our animation thing here and we'll come up here and we can create a new variable. We'll call this animation player. We'll set this equal to null and then you can do function ready in the ready function. We can say animation player equals and if you do the dollar sign here this is a shorthand for getting access to a node in the tree here that you are that is a child of you basically and so you can see we could get the animation player the collision shape or the sprite we're going to get the animation player and it turns that green saying this is a path to a node that's to get to this node. So we're setting our animation player variable, this is a reference, equal to the path to that node so that we can get access to it. Now, why do we have to do it in the ready function? Well, if we try to do it up here, um, that node might not be finished initializing its properties and stuff. And so we wouldn't be able to access it yet. It might actually not even be in the scene yet. We want to make sure and do it in the ready function once we're ready it should be ready as well and we can access it that way. And then we can do anything we want with the animation player once we have access to it. However, there's a shortcut for this inside of Godot. Instead of doing it like this, you can do what's called an on ready var. So we can do on ready and then you can say animation player equals and then do the dollar sign here, animation player. And th what this allows you to do is get rid of the ready function. So you don't have to have a ready function that accesses a whole bunch of nodes, right? You can just do on ready var and this variable will not be created until the node is ready. That's what the on ready keyword here says beforehand. So now that we have access to our animation player, let's start with the very basics. We'll make it so that our character animates when we're moving and doesn't animate when we're stopped. Well, we'll do, we'll run the idle when we're stopped. So if you want to look and see what you can do with this animation player, we can actually search the help and say animation player right here, click on this. Okay, so this is the documentation for the animation player. Let's look at some of the methods that it has because that's what you can do, right? What can it do? You can see we can add animations, advance, advance, uh, find an animation and you look through these and you see play here and it says string and so let's click on that it says play plays the animation with the key name so whatever we pass in as the name here that's what it will play that's the animation then there's some custom there's some optional arguments here that we could pass in but we don't need to worry about all of those so we can come back to our player and in in here when we're moving, right? This is when we're moving, we can say animation player dot play and it gives us the list of our different animations. Well, this is when we're moving, so let's do idle right. Okay, that's a good starting point. And when we're not moving, wait, no, that's not right. We want run right, silly me. And then when we're not moving, we can do animation player dot play idle right. This is when we want idle right. Let's save and run the game. And now our character only animates when we're moving, otherwise it plays the idle animation. Now let's see if we can take this one step farther. 
we have our input vector and it will be pos it will be positive the x value will be positive if we're moving to the right and negative if we're moving to the left right so let's implement that into here as well we'll say if input vector vector.x is greater than 0 that would be positive play moving to the right else let's copy this paste it right here play run left let's save and run and now if we move to the left our character animates or turns and faces the left it doesn't work for other directions though right and you could you could write a big giant script that said oh what if our input you know if our input is this then move to the right if it's this then move up you know and try and figure out all of that logic but that's going to be a huge pain we're not going to want to do that that'll that, that won't be fun at all so and this gets into the next video uh, we will be learning about animation trees and an animation tree will allow us to easily animate our character in multiple different directions including if you had a game with, uh, we only have four directions here for our sprite, but if you had a game that had a sprite for eight, all eight directions, or even more directions, you could set up your animation tree to handle multiple different directions for uh, animations for all of those different directions. So that's what we're going to be learning about in the next video. This one is going to be done here. We created the basic animations. We learned how to get access to a child node inside of our scene and um, how to look up the things that node can do in the documentation and then use them like this. That's really important. When you're learning about nodes, you can see what can this node do. Look it up in the documentation. You can kind of see what it can do. And so I'm happy with how this video turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something from it. If you did, give it a like. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Once again, this video was sponsored by my Kickstarter backers for the One Bit Godot course. The, that course was funded and I was able to make this series as part of that Kickstarter. If you're interested in learning about the course, there'll be a link for that. And I will talk to you all later.